it works. Hello everyone, my name is Guillaume Balas. I'm the CMO of 3Scale, one of the numerous API management solution providers out there. Um, and today I'm going to talk about which business model to win in the API economy, what type of consideration you should have when you want to launch an API program for your business. So welcome to the API economy. I think that the conference today and all the discussions, articles that we're seeing about APIs are more than a trend. They're a reality. We're in an API economy uh, world. They're everywhere. If you take Internet of Things, if you take mobile, if you take websites, there are trillions of transactions happening every day over the web. And most of them are very likely going through one API or multiple APIs. They're reshaping the web and they're reshaping the businesses. They're everywhere. There is not a single business today that can escape this API revolution whether media, banking, social, e-commerce, whatever, you name it. We work with more than 15 different sectors at Sriscale, and you've got some samples here represented. This famous iceberg, I'm pretty sure everybody has, has seen it at least once, <laughs> so I'm going to try to be fast on it and not bother you too much with it. Programmable web lists 10,000 APIs, public APIs, what we believe is that actually there are many more than that. And actually, there, we're talking about a million API by 2017. You have all those internal APIs that a few speakers before me have been mentioning that are used for internal purposes, that are used to access specific resources of a machine that are not exposed to third party, and that are not listed on a public listing like programmable web. So we're heading towards definitely uh, an API-driven internet talking about millions, but how did we get there? So let me do a small jump back in time. A few years ago, I think you know this guy, everybody knows it, no? Who, who, who that is? The name is at the bottom, so I'm cheating. <laughs> Mr. Anderson. Anderson. Mr. Anderson said in 2011, software um, is eating the world. Software, as a matter of fact, is the lifeblood of modern businesses. It's the way to automate, optimize processes, transactions, distribution. Nevertheless, you can truly harness the value of software and those improvements that it brings if you make those resources, those components of software accessible to third parties who really need to have those capabilities available for themselves. This is why we believe at 3Scale that actually APIs are eating software. Why? Mainly three reasons. The first one is that you want to build future-proof systems. Systems that are modular, that can grow over time, that can evolve over time without you having to pour millions and millions of euros or money, whatever the currency is, into it so that it can evolve over time. You want to have the cases in a close to real-time way because this is part of the value of software. You want to be able to process, optimize your transactions, your distribution channels in a very, very fast and efficient way. And we believe that the underlying glue or the under underlying component to that, the only way to really enable that are APIs. This is why we think that APIs are adding software. Basically, you need also to control who is accessing your resources, who is accessing your interfaces in terms of business. And the only way to do that, if you're exposing it, is an API. Therefore, I don't know if you know, uh, Dion Inchcliffe, pretty uh, famous uh, tech consultant out there and uh, writer and blogger, said actually in 2008, so it was way before uh, the API uh, hype and craziness was uh, already here. He said in 2008, and I'm going to read it, APIs will be essential for competitive survival. 
So it was quite visionary, and I do believe it's true. I think that companies need to embrace APIs if they want to remain competitive, as they had to embrace software adoption and creation to remain competitive in their specific field or sector. Now it will happen with APIs. So we're heading towards an API-driven business or API-driven businesses. What does that mean? That means that now you have a lot of companies that are spinning off an API out of their business model or out of their business, basically. And that means that because you're spinning off something from your core activities, you're thinking, well, how am I going to get benefit out of it? How am I going to monetize that? What value am I going to get out of it? So what type of business model am I going to apply to my API? And I think that's the first mistake of a lot of companies when they come to thinking about their API program. What is the, the value of your business? Are your core assets, your core expertise, your core technology. APIs are just a funnel into those core assets, into those technologies. Therefore, you shouldn't ask what API for my business or for my business model, but you should think, well, sorry, we shouldn't ask what business model for my API, but you should think what API for my business model. Your API should serve your existing business and should be a way for you to bring additional value to you, your customers, your partners, your ecosystem basically, and not the other way around. From a very high level point of view, there are at least five ways an API uh, or APIs can bring value to a business. I think that everybody more or less has been in touch with them or has seen them. Mobile enablement is the first one. It's probably the most obvious one. I don't think that we have any standalone application that doesn't talk back to a backend system uh, on, the cloud, on the cloud. They're all uh, fetching data or resources somewhere. Mobile apps are built using at least one API, if not multiple APIs. Mobile enablement is the first one. Customer and partner ecosystem grows. So we are in a very competitive landscape. The internet is pretty crowded, it's growing fast, but there are tons and tons of companies in each sectors. And you want to make sure that you reach out to your customers as fast as possible and actually be the first to reach out to people. APIs are making these very agile, very fast, very efficient, and help you in a tremendous way to build your ecosystem of partners and customers. Second one, distrib distribution channel. We talked about data sets. We talked about uh, media uh, assets, images, videos, uh, whatever. That's another way of uh, leveraging APIs. Powering new business model is more a philosophical aspect uh, that applies to all, those, uh, to all those components I've just mentioned. And the, the last one from a very practical point of view is creating that agility as uh, uh, the gentleman from uh, IBM was mentioning. Having an API enables you to, to have this pivoting capability in your business. It enables you to change the way you are working, the way you are interacting with others, and therefore are critical from that point of view. So that's great. We, I think, and I hope, all agree that APIs are critical to your business, that you need to have one. Uh, it's for your survival. That's, that's important. But therefore, there are some key considerations that we need to have. The first one is, as I mentioned, make sure that you know what are your core assets and how you're going to be able to leverage it through an API. The MVC model is a fantastic framework for you to think about it. APIs basically enable MVC at a cloud scale. If you know what is your core asset, the model, the controller, or the view, you will be able to find what are the complementary services, applications, businesses that can build on top of your API, and therefore you will know 
which component you need to leverage to build that API. Just an example, as Ziggy, a customer of ours, they have built a natural language understanding technology. That's the controller. That's what it provides for an API. They don't bother with providing interfaces, uh, views, or models. They leave that to third parties, to business partners, to customers, to integrators who have the vision of creating new apps, new services based on that technology. The second thing to take into, consider into consideration is the degree of openness of your API. Private, public, semi-private, semi-public. You need to think about that. Uh, there is a virtual uh, cycle, I would say. From my experience and from our customer base, as of today, more than 70% of our customers have a private API, meaning that their API is available only to their business partners, selected business partners, and very specific customers. They're not public to each and every single developer out there on the web. Um, this is just a minority of, of the APIs out there. So you have to think about that. The second one is the revenue model that uh, you're going to build uh, uh, around your API or using your API. And here I would say that the imagination, your imagination is your limitation. That's the list, uh, the, the, the type of business models that John Messer was listing in 2005. That's 2007, 2011. 2013, we've got even more. And it's growing. APIs are really just, again, a mean, a funnel to your core assets, to your business expertise and skills. And there are hundreds of ways for you to get value from that from a revenue point of view. The fourth component is a delivery. You have to think about security, about accessibility, flexibility, versioning, UX, UI, all those kind of things as any other product or any other service that you will put out there and make available to third parties, again, whether totally public or uh, selected private uh, uh, partners. Therefore, you need to think about the delivery aspect of your API. And here you have a few, a few companies like Threescale uh, that are here to help. From a business opportunity and including the business models in there, we've done an exercise of structuring uh, or trying to structure uh, the different typologies of APIs. We believe that there are four types of API. The API is a product. That's the first one. The API project the product. The third one is the API promote the product. And the fourth one is the API feeds and powers the product. What does that mean? So the API is a product. That means that the API is a core value. You sell the API as is, access to the API, and you monetize that. Twilio is the world famous example. Uh, getting a little bit boring. I need to find another one, actually. And basically, they make money if the core uh, service see a, sees a, us a usage growth. They have an ecosystem strategy around that to bring that growth to help those revenues. Multiple tactics, multiple objectives, uh, but the two I've highlighted here are, are direct customer usage and also encouraging resellers of their technology of their infrastructure through an API. A few other competitors or examples of APIs that are based on that model or where the API is basically the product, Skype, well, for only they're terminating their API, which is not great, but Amazon is definitely a great example. Stripe or Music Match uh, are two. The second model is the API projects the product. So we're gonna have mobile apps, uh, widgets, uh, third parties integration, uh, adding utility using an API, and Salesforce, and in particular, uh, the App Exchange platform is probably the best example. They, Salesforce has built this beautiful CRM solution, and what they've done is that they've been enhancing the user experience of their customers. They've been increasing the number of features and functionalities and services available to them, by just making an API available to third-party 
for them to build new applications, new services. And therefore, this benefits Salesforce because they're going to have more and more customers that are going to be using the core Salesforce service or product. And also, it will increase probably the, the, the usage and spend uh, of those users because they will purchase more uh, applications and do more operations using the, the core product. Again, uh, another set of tactics and strategies to build your ecosystem, to grow it, to make it strive and successful. Um, the two I've highlighted here, encourage third-party tools, that's pretty obvious, uh, otherwise you wouldn't be promoting your products through your API in that case, uh, and your building switching costs, basically. Many examples similar to that one, eBay, Hoover's, uh, FedEx, Yellow Pages to a certain extent. That's the projecting the product. The fourth one, uh, the third one, sorry, is the API promotes the product. So in that case, you've got uh, services that are designed using an API. They are not necessarily the primary asset or the primary service that you're providing, but those services are meant to drive traffic back to your core services, to your core technology. This is the example of Amazon.com in that case, where they've got widgets all over the web, all over the place, which will enable searches for some customers to find products, availability, uh, prices, whatsoever, and that will drive traffic back to the core Amazon website and have people ready to spend money on the Amazon site. So the money here, uh, or the revenue model, is basically through an increased number of users of your core platform, and the secondary one is an increasing spent on your core product because you have these, I would say, brand diffusion, uh, the possibility to reach out to more segments, to more niches, to more sectors, without necessarily you having to bother promoting to those guys that you don't necessarily know or are not your core customer base, your products, your services, and make money from them. Expedia is leveraging that, Lulu is another one, and you've got several examples around there. Finally, the API power and feeds the product. So we're talking about content. We're talking about user-generated content. We're talking about uh, user data. Um, this has been mentioned also previously. Um, you want to find a way to monetize data about your users. And these data has to be anonymized, obviously. And that's the case of Twitter, even though they don't necessarily anonymize it in their case. <laughs> Twitter uh, has an API that um, powers and feeds their product. It powers it because it brings them more customers through all the applications, all, through all the interfaces that third parties have been building over the time, through all the websites that are leveraging the Twitter feeds, the Twitter data to create more subscriptions to be able to access and interact with those data. And it also feeds the platform itself because Twitter constantly gather more and more and more and more data about people, about trends, about topics that they will be able to monetize somehow, some way, sometime, hopefully for them. From an ecosystem strategy uh, perspective, that's, uh, I think, the two uh, critical aspect of uh, that type of API is definitely brand diffusion, again, as the API uh, promotes the product, um, but it creates a virtual cycle of data in and out uh, and creates a unique uh, strength or power, a position of power in an ecosystem or in a marketplace where you're becoming the leader uh, in that field because you have this constantly growing uh, amazing uh, number of data in your database. Foursquare, Discuss, YouTube, Facebook obviously are all um, in that same spirit. Uh, their core business at the end of the day is data, is reselling data, information about your customers, about your users, what they're doing, what are the trends, what are the topics. So, conclusions. Um, I think we all agree that 
again, um, APIs are critical for businesses uh, and for their survival uh, on the internet in the digital world. And so the API revolution is here. Get on the train, don't miss it. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be in trouble. Second element, your core asset is what has most value in your organization, in your business, and you should capitalize on that. You should build on that. And the APIs are just a funnel into those core assets. Don't forget that. Therefore, you should think what type of API you want to build for your business, for, uh, for your business model uh, in order to maximize value, whether monetary or not, for your business. And finally, there is not only one way to do it. As we've seen, there are multiple revenue models, there are multiple degrees of openness, there are multiple um, or different types of assets that you can expose, even within a single company. So imagination is just your limitation and make sure that you think thoroughly and carefully, not only from a technical point of view, but from a business and strategical point of view about your API program. APIs are way more than just a piece of technology. They are business enabler. You have to remind, remember that constantly. And finally, just uh, sharing a, a few data with you. These are uh, um, some uh, numbers that uh, we gathered uh, from programmable web and our uh, own customer base. And this represents a little bit what's the distribution between the different types of business model that I was mentioning, uh, along with other type of specificities, um, government data or, or scientific uh, uh, API projects. And as you can see, it's pretty well distributed. There is not, again, one way that is uh, dominating all the others. So uh, don't get stuck on something with an API. APIs have these uh, magic or this beauty that, again, you can pivot, adjust, change, and create beautiful things um, on a regular basis, leveraging those pieces of technology. Thank you. <laughs>